Hi, my name is Gabrielle B. McLean, and I'm a professional painter. I thought I would try something, which is to record a bit of my painting process in case it might inspire other people to paint more. Okay, so here is one of three paintings in a series that I'm doing for a show that I'm having in July. Period. Ha! I think I'm texting. That's funny. Anyway, <laughs> okay, so here's one of them. Here's another. These are underpaintings at this point, and I thought I would show you how to paint or how I paint my underpainting, especially, or at least in this case. It changes all the time. Um, so, first off, it took me a minute to decide which colors I was going to use for my underpainting. So in this painting, I actually used some RNF pigment sticks and some other colors before deciding it was too complicated for the underpainting. So I settled actually on, wait, just learning this thing. I settled on quinacrinone red by Gamblin and green gold by Gamblin. Both are transparent colors, although I don't always use transparent colors in my underpaintings. It just depends. I actually have some cold wax medium as well, but I'm finding I'm not using that much uh, at this point. And I'm not using white at all. The other things I'm going to be using are just a couple of brushes, some Gamsol, and also some shop towels. I used to use cloth towels, t-shirts, but I found I used too many of them, and there's a fire hazard that is associated with keeping turpentine-soaked or Gamsol-soaked rags around, especially in enclosed spaces, and sometimes my drawers, they're enclosed if I don't finish in a day and I want to keep things till the next day. Okay, so let me get started. So first and foremost, let me put this down. There we go, and let's get it to where, there we go. So when I'm working with oil, I actually work a lot with acrylic as well. When I'm working with oil, I always, always, always wear gloves. Sometimes I double glove because I don't want the oil paint touching my hands at all. Um, okay, so a little bit of background about this particular series. It's called Mesa Roses because where I used to live, there was an apartment complex that had this gorgeous front area that had these iceberg roses, and they decided to tear them out. So a friend of mine went and grabbed a bunch of the roses that were on the ground before they were taken, before they were hauled away. And I saw them and loved them and took pictures and blew them up and crop them according to some canvases that I had on hand, and they're actually not canvases. I work a lot on board. I, I prefer it for some of my scraping techniques. Um, sometimes I work just on canvas, it just depends. The other thing that I want to say is I made this gesso. This is a homemade gesso made with PVA glue, and while I like it, it's a little too absorbent for Mm, the type of underpainting I want to do. So next time I prep my canvases or my panels, I'm going to use something different. Okay, so I tend to start with a reference, even though the final paintings don't always look like anything like the reference. So I put that over here and get it to stick. And then I make sure that I have some paper towels on hand because what happens is I get in the flow and then it's disrupted. You can hear them. Here, this is what I use. Original shop towels. Um, I've used the, the generic brand and they're not quite as fabric-y, like as soft and squishy. Okay, so I begin, I actually projected these. I used a projector to project the original image. Sometimes I do that, sometimes I don't. It depends on the final look. I'm going to abstract these so much that I wanted this level of structure. 
when I don't care or when I want it to actually ironically be more structured, I don't start out with a, um, a projection. So my favorite brushes are silver brushes, the Brissalon brand. But for this type of underpainting, I buy brushes from my local art store in the mm, bargain bin. <laughs> Because why? Why spend money on good brushes when you're just going to destroy them like I'm about to do? So here's, I dip some, I make sure my brush is nice and wet with Gamsol. And then I start painting. And I'm just drawing. My first um, foray into art as a child was drawing. I didn't paint until I got a job painting um, while I was in college. And I... Uh, got a job painting murals, uh, children's murals in hospitals. And it was awesome. I loved it. And I worked for that company. I worked for Roger at Mural Environments for quite a few years, actually, before I went into business for myself. And it's only in the last, that was 30 years ago, and it's only in the last 10 or 12 years that I've that I got a studio, I'm not working out of my garage, and I've started to, well not started to, I actually mm, specialize in large scale artwork for private clients. And so a lot of times clients will come to me and they'll say, I need a large painting, I needed this color scheme, I want this feel, or I'll ask them what feel they want, I'll ask specific questions, and then I come up with a painting concept and the style, I have a variety of styles that I can work in, and we go from there. And, yeah. So right now what I'm doing is I'm looking at the structure of the original reference, and I'm, I'm laying in my darks, which in this case, well, it's both the green and the quinacrinone, but, um, yeah, it just helps me to see. And usually the way that I decide it, and it's by no means the only way, but I usually put my underpainting is the opposite of what I am expecting it to be at the end. So all of this is actually, it looks pink in the final reference. So my, my low lights, my crevices are going to have some green, so I'm making them pink. And then my highlights are gonna be pink, so I'm making them this kind of yellowy gold color. That's just how I think about it. And then I dip my shop towel into my Gamsol, and I just start moving it around. And see how it's leaving some marks? I actually really, I don't mind it, but I would prefer it if it moved a little bit more. Um, so either, like I said, I'm not sure. I'll either use a different gesso next time. The acrylic gesso, I don't mind using it under oil painting. Some people don't like it. I don't mind, but I can't sand it that well. It doesn't sand that easily and that bugs me because I like a smooth surface. So actually what I'm going to use is joint compound and plaster of Paris because it's on a panel. I'm not worried about it bending and flexing and cracking. Um, and I think the, the joint compound isn't as white as plaster of Paris, which is why I would probably use plaster of Paris for some things. Um, a lot of times the white underpainting isn't as crucial to me because I cover it up. Um, yeah. So then I'm constantly stepping back and I'm constantly making sure there's nothing behind me, either my dog or a chair I've left or anything, I'm, because I will trip on it. Kind of like getting the paper towels ahead of time, I don't want to have to think about falling over <laughs> when I'm painting. I know, I'm weird that way. And I don't care about the drips at this point. Sometimes I like them. Um, this part is one of the highlights <laughs> of the painting, and what I mean the lightest part of the painting. So I don't tend to put paint there. I tend to put Gamsol there first. And I can use other mediums to get this kind of transparent look. I mean, like the cold wax medium, I could use that, because then I'm not bound to the fat over thin rule, um, as I would be with straight paint, which sometimes I don't abide by it, even if I don't use cold wax medium. Um, yeah, so 
so I just kind of play with it and I, I look at it and once the structure, I like angles, I like the angles because it allows me in my final painting to get, get organic with some of my brush marks and some of my, the, mark, the marks that I make with RNF pigment sticks and my fingers or some of my other mark making tools that I like. It just depends. I like the juxtaposition. I remember reading once in one of, the, one of the books that I've read, one of the many books on painting, that you don't want to make things the same size. So you don't want to have all the same brushwork. You don't want to have all the same sh size of shape um, in your painting. You don't want to have all the brushworks going in one direction. I mean, you can do that if that's your choice. But if you're trying to make a dynamic painting, these are the things that can stall a painting. And so I try. So what I'll do is I start with structure, which sometimes is not that dynamic, right? The actual structure, because it's something real. Um, I mean, these roses are half dead, which to me gives them, you know, in an, in an odd way, more life, because they're drooping and they're falling and they're they're decaying in a way that's not predictable, and not very, in some ways, rose-like, which I, I really like. I mean, I like that. I like that surprise. That that's kind of unpredictability. And I also, a lot of the things that I paint tend to be past their prime. They have an element of, of decay or, or death in them. And I really like that. I like that reminder that that apex of health and life and fertility is fleeting. and that, like for these roses, they took a lot more time to die than they did to be in full bloom. Which might sound depressing to some, but it actually, there's just beauty. There's beauty in the decline, I guess, is what I want to say. So now I'm looking at this, and this, I think I want to do pink. No, actually. Mm. Yeah, I want to do green. So I'm recording, so I'm talking. But I actually talk to myself all the time. Like all the time, out loud. No apologies. Because I can hear, when I hear myself talk, I actually, it actually helps me resolve certain things um, in the painting. Whereas if I just leave it in my head, sometimes it takes me a minute longer to resolve it. And then I, I used to paint very realistically. And I used to draw, when I would draw as a kid, I was, it was very important to me that everything was as realistic as possible and very, very detailed. And I think in some ways that had more to do with my chaotic childhood than it did with um, anything else, really. I mean, I, I love to draw, and it, maybe not, I'm not sure, actually. I just know that now that I'm older, I really love the spontaneity of more abstract work. Although I will say I've tried for years, not now, but I tried for years to paint abstractly. And, and by that I mean I would put a blank canvas in front of me and I would just pick some colors that I liked and I started painting and I would just paint and paint because I'd read that that's just the way to paint intuitively. And the paintings always came out just horrible. They were horrible. And, and so I felt very bad about myself for a long time. Like, oh, that's great. I'm a pair of hands. I can paint realistically. But really, the real artists paint abstractly. And, and now I realize that I'm one of these painters that really loves to paint with an element of realism. That's just, that's just what interests me. I love nature or um, basing my paintings on nature. Um, I love, I love seeing the original inspiration underneath all the marks that I end up making. And, you know, that might not be somebody's cup of tea, but it's mine. Like, it's, it's taken me, seriously, it's taken me, what, going on 30 years that I've been a professional painter for other people 
to really start to embrace my own work because I don't know why. I think because I always thought I was a pair of hands. I just, I resisted calling myself an artist because I was just painting what people told me to paint. You know, they'd say, hey, can you paint a mural? And it's like, yeah, I can. And I didn't think there was any, there was no intelligence in that. There was no, not intelligence, that's the wrong word, but there was no innate creativity in that because I was just doing what they asked. And sure, they didn't tell me what animals they want. They didn't tell me what colors to use. They didn't tell me any of that. They didn't tell me where to place anything. But I downplayed that so much. <sighs> it's interesting to me. And now, I don't downplay that at all. I think that if somebody asks you, it's like people who cook. You give them a list of ingredients and they make something amazing. I am the first person to say that's creative. And, but yet I wouldn't say that about my own work. Like, I, I would just downplay my own work. So I'm trying not to do that anymore. Actually, I don't really do that anymore. Um, I also, I'm a big fan of, there's no statute of limitations on when a painting is finished. I can think a painting is finished, and then, you know, five years later, I'll work on it some more if I feel like it. Or I'm getting into encaustic painting, and I have just went through the studio, and all the paintings that were either samples or <laughs> underpaintings or I don't even know what, things I just weren't resolved I didn't really like. I just put a coat of wax over all of them. I have like all these paintings that are waxed, basically, and then I'll just decide what to do with them. And I already like them better for being waxed. It's new to me. It's interesting. All right, so this one, I don't know if you can see this. This dark shadow, I want to, it's too light. Ugh. So I think I want, this is where I just start laying in lots of color. So I can always take it off. And there's a difference between saturated paper towels and new paper towels. So I will deliberately keep my saturated paper towels in one sitting. Like I said, I get rid of them at the end of the sitting because I don't want them to catch fire. Um, but you can put them in water and things uh, to keep them from catching fire. A little side note. Um, here we go. So now I know that that's darker. And I can, this one's saturated. So I know that I can just go in and start rubbing on the, on the panel like this. And I'm, I'm also already starting to get a feel for the movement in the painting, for the movement of the, the brush strokes that I'll eventually use. Like I know, see how I'm going? I'm going this way and this way, and then I'm deliberately going this way. Oh, see, that's awesome. I love dipping my saturated towel, and I can draw, which I love. That makes me happy. I think, by the way, that is why I like to paint big, is because my, I got started painting murals, largely for children, but also for adults. And there was just something, even to this day when I paint murals, I just, there's this magic that happens when the painting goes from the drawing phase, which I now do all in the computer, to you know, actually being on the wall. And I get that same jolt of excitement when I project um, an image that I've created or that I've edited. And, you know, decided, cropped where I want it. Yeah, see? And then I leave the drawing, and for what it's worth, what I use as a drawing material is not a pencil. I use actually these water-soluble, water um, they're Derwent, water-soluble graphitint pencils, and it allows me to you know, wipe them back and do what I need to do with them before I put oil on. And yet, when I put the oil on, they don't smudge, unlike graphite smudges. And sometimes I like it, but sometimes I don't. So it just depends. Okay, and now I'm seeing it's really dark. And again, I'm not. I'm not being a huge amount of literal because I don't
uh, because I don't care at this point. Like I'm gonna, I just need something for my eyeballs to rest on when I start adding color. And also, I'm one of these people, I'm not sure what color I'm gonna use. You know, I don't have my palette completely picked out. And I'm okay with that. I actually like not knowing. I like knowing only the next indicated action because otherwise I start getting in my own head and getting too far ahead of myself and, and I end up messing it up or I end up losing confidence in the painting. I start to, I just start to question what I'm doing. Um, and this is probably obvious for most people who've not worked professionally for other people but just painted their own way because they love it their whole life is that I'm just now painting the way I want to paint. Which again sounds so obvious or such a fundamental part of creating. Um, but that has not been my experience. You know, I've been like this workhorse, which has really, really, I'm super grateful because it has allowed me, it has allowed me to learn how to paint in so many different techniques or so many styles with so many different materials. Like I am, I am competent in watercolor and gouache and acrylic and oil and I'm getting competent in encaustic and mixed media and large scale and tiny and ink and it's great. It's, it's great. Like I wouldn't do those things on my own. Um, okay. So anyway, I think that's, I'm just going to go, I'm going to put this up on the easel and finish it, but Hopefully that gives you a little bit of idea, an idea of um, my process. Okay, you guys.